All right, guys, in today's video, I wanna talk about three different ways to shallow out your downswing. Now, I'm gonna tell you up front that uh, when I say shallow your downswing, um, I'm not talking about it in the traditional sense where we talk about sort of a plane shift during the downswing. What we're gonna talk about here today is shallowing your downswing in terms of your angle of attack. Um, sort of how wide your circle is, how much down you hit on the golf ball, how the club gets delivered to the ball in terms of the angle of attack. Now, I have three different drills that I use a lot. They work really well. And we actually did a live over the shoulder lesson uh, with one of my students, Nick, that we're gonna put in this as well. So you can start to see how I would work through this uh, with an actual student as well. Um, so angle of attack and shallowing out your downswing pattern. Now, we've all talked about, and we've done a lot of videos, and we'll continue to do videos on um, a plane shift during the downswing or shallowing your plane, but for angle of attack, okay? When I'm talking about angle of attack, I'm gonna take my setup here and then um, demonstrate a couple pieces. So when I'm talking about angle of attack, what I'm talking about here is the way the club head is delivered to the golf ball. Okay, and what I mean by that is the vertical descent of the club. If you were to, uh, people use the analogy or think of a plane sort of landing on the runway, right? Basically, I could deliver the club to the ball in a very vertical fashion, so the club would come from fairly high up and work really down narrow on the golf ball. That would be more like, uh, if you were to imagine a V sort of shape, very up, very down, and back up or I could have more of a U shape, which would be the club head working down into the golf ball on a wider circle, right? Lower to the ground earlier, flatter bottom of the arc. Now, uh, in terms of quality of contact, club face control, um, low point, so on and so forth, the better golfers, um, if we're looking for better strike and, and more consistent um, ball patterns, I want you guys and the better golfers have more of a wide circle and a shallow angle of attack. When I have my track man out and we look at irons and into the woods, um, you know, the PGA Tour numbers might be five, six degrees at most down into the three degrees. What does that mean? That means they're not hitting a lot down on it. Um, LPGA Tour players, as the speed goes down a little bit, will be even shallower. So we did some videos on the driver and I'm talking about throwing the circle and casting. A lot of you guys don't like that, but the reality is the slower your speed is, the more this applies to you, okay? If you have less speed, the more you hit down, you're done because you can't manage that dynamic loft. You need a wider circle. Even if you have a lot of speed, um, wider circle, you're gonna notice your miss patterns being a lot better. So a couple things here just in general with that too. Um, with the wide circle, you can tell certain things with divot, certain things you cannot, but certain things you can. If you have this V look where it was very down and very steep, obviously you have a deep divot pattern. We don't want that, okay? We want a little like sort of bacon crisps, Martin Chuck says on his videos. I like that um, analogy there. It's just sort of getting the, the a little bit of a strip of ground here. If you were to do this good, we would have a kind of nice shallow um, divot there or very little divot at all. We don't want huge gouges here for most of the shots. And again, the purpose is for that, for solidness of contact, centers of strike, so on and so forth. Now, what we're gonna do here is um, I'm gonna show you a couple of my main drills. I'm gonna demonstrate how to do them. And I'm also gonna show you some clips with how I worked with Nick and, and sort of talked him through. And again, this is a sort of work good with him as an example. I use this for a lot of different people. If you can identify yourself as steep, if you have big divot patterns, um, things like that, struggle with contact, this is something you really want to pay attention to. So I'm going to show you the three drills that we use here. Okay, so drill number one that we'll use a lot, and this is sort of to reverse engineer the angle of attack. I have a head cover. I just grabbed a five wood head cover. Um, driver head cover will be fine. A wood head cover or hybrid or something like that would be better because it's not as high, right? I only have that about an inch off the ground. Now, in terms of setting this deal up, I would put it typically about a grip and a half to two grips in front of the golf ball to start. One grip length, maybe a grip and a half to two grip lengths to begin with. I've got a sand wedge. You're going to start short and work your way up. The goal here is to get the club head working into the ball on a wider arc, right? Shallower to the ground, clipping the ball off the ground more so with, with tiny little divots, not steep, steep divots. So, um, what I would do here to practice this is um, start with sandwich shots, maybe you know 50 yard half uh, swings, 50 yard shots, super slow. We're not we're not going 
drive or anything yet and gradually work that. Now when I do that and I'll do some demonstrations here, I really feel the club head working up past impact a lot higher than my normal. If I get the club head working up past impact higher than normal, it's gonna increase my odds of having the club head work down to the ball nice and shallow. So I've got the ball on a tee here, uh, kind of coming the grass, but also to help this drill, you can put it on the tee and lift it up a little bit. And I'm just gonna do a little half one slow here first, see if I can miss that uh, head cover on a little half one. Good. That was a nice little shallow pick of the ball off the ground. Minor little divot, right? No big gouging divot. And I would do this again with a tee um, first, or you can tee it up even if you're on a little range mat here. And I would hit a couple and just gain some feels for it. Again, this is for you guys and gals who are watching that are steep during the downswing. Whether you're too steep this way or just in terms of angle of attack and too narrow, um, we want to widen that circle out here and that's going to help you. So here we go again, sand wedge, just a little half kind of 50 yarder. Really feeling the club head work up past the impact and that's a nice solid strike. So this would be drill number one, um, a grip to two grips in front will be perfect. I'm going to show you here uh, working with Nick through this same drill. So angle of attack part two. Part of that is you hitting, um, obviously widening the circle less down. Mm -hmm. Let me happen there for a second. But the other part would be you're feeling it on the follow through part. So getting the club over that? Yeah, working the club head up as you do your flick part. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just do a little bunt here. So I chunked that, mm -hmm. um, but getting it over that deal, what was that angle attack? Minus 0.6. Okay, good. What are you sensing on all these? What do you feel? Well, it does feel like I'm like flipping it. Yeah, good, mm -hmm. good. Flip for you, good. Flip for most people, not good. Yeah. There we go. Good, again. This, Nick, this would be a beautiful like 20 ball warm up for you. This part here? Yes. Okay. Ball on the tee, whether even if you're on the grass. Mm -hmm. So this accomplishes the same thing as putting a stick here. It's just a different way to do the same deal. You yeah. like this one better for you? I like, I like you doing both of them. Okay. Yes. We got to get good at this right here. Working short and slow and build our way up. And I want you to get to the point where you can make some pretty long swings with this and hit the ball reasonably solid and miss that deal. All right, guys, drill number two for shallowing your downswing here. Now, um, I have an alignment rod that I stuck into the ground. The purpose of this drill is for you to have an object that's behind you about, let's call it a foot and a half. If we were to use the club again, probably about the same, maybe two grips um, behind you with the alignment rod. The purpose, and we'll show you from down the line, is to have this thing low enough that you have to feel your club head working uh, towards the ground and getting shallower sooner. Now, you'll see again from the other angle how I have it set up. I've got it far enough forward where simultaneously, as I have to get the club head uh, closer to the ground, I also have to keep it inside the stick. If I went over the top, I'd hit that. I have to keep it inside the stick as I come down. This out of the three is probably the most um, difficult or in your face or legit. You kind of, if you set this one up correctly, um, you kind of can't mess it up. Now in the video with Nick, you'll see here, I had a bucket in. So you could take the same stick, stick it through a bucket to the point where it's probably, if I did it this way, maybe I got one step up off of my grip, right? Or if you did the club head down this way, maybe about to my first step there. So we'll call that to about right here. Um, off of the ground. Again, you'll see a little bit better from the other side. And the point here is you're going to feel the same things. If you're someone who's very steep in this way, you have to feel like the club head's working lower to the ground as you're turning, getting the club head low back here, turn, 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 and come from the inside. Now, this one's a little bit exaggerated for me. Let's see if I can do it. I'm going to feel that club head working a little bit more low and inside here. I've got an eight iron. That was a fairly good strike, a little bit of a draw. Now that feels, I hit that a little thin, so that's perfect, right? I got the ball on the tee, I thinned it a little. What does that mean? I wasn't too far this way. I was almost too shallow there. Perfect, that's good feedback for this. If you guys do one of the three, in terms of most immediate feedback, because the next one we're gonna show you, you guys are gonna see in other videos. This one I haven't done yet, so 
really key in on this uh, one from this side and the other side, there's no way you cannot get shallow if you do this and set it up correctly. All right, guys, so from the down the line position, again, I have the stick angled in towards the ground. Um, could also put that through the bucket. In fact, I'm gonna pull the bucket in and show you what that's like in a minute. Um, I just want you to see how this is set up here. Again, this is my favorite um, out of the three. This is designed both to, so you can get a visual, the club head working lower to the ground sooner instead of it being very vertical this way. It's also designed to get the club head working more from low and inside compared to obviously if you got any kind of over the top here, you would hit this stick. Hint, hint here, I guess, this is probably my favorite um, and number one shallow drill is this one out of the three of them. Love, love, love this one if I could only do one of them. So you see the angle there in terms of my setup position. If I took the club and set it back here and put the club on its sort of natural lie angle, there's probably maybe two or three fingers between the um, stick there and my club in terms of how low the, the deal is. I'm gonna pull the bucket in two that you'll see that I did with Nick in terms of setting this up. So we'll go ahead and just demonstrate one from down the line. Again, feeling the club head working lower to the ground sooner as I turn and more inside, it's okay to feel like you unhinge when you do that, okay. So, we're gonna demonstrate the down the line. Feel the club head working low and inside. And that was a thin miss for me. I'm gonna do that again, which is good. For me, who comes too far inside, this is over-exaggerated, right? Which is good, that means I'm not coming too steep. Let's do that again. We'll get the club head working low and inside. Cool. That was a smidge thin, but still a better shot than the other one. So that's how I do the down the line portion. Okay, that's how we set it up. Now I'm gonna pull this bucket in here quick, and I have just a big teaching bucket, and you can use anything. And I'm gonna set it up the same way. So I'll take this stick out of the ground, and I'm gonna just put it through the bucket to the point where it's probably a little more than a grip length above the ground, right? So that's probably still a little bit too high. I'm gonna put it through here and here. And you gotta play around with the height thing. Obviously, I gotta play around with the height thing here too. Probably to about right there. So if I put my ball back on the tee, this should give me about the same height there as I had before. Here's my club. This is actually a little bit lower, so about about the um, top of the grip. And I wanna feel the same things, right? This is good, exaggerated. And I have it just far enough towards me here that I still gotta get the club. See, if you put this in and it goes too far this way, that's ridiculous. Like I couldn't make that work. But I wanna put it in here where it's like maybe a couple, you know, if this is the golf ball here, it's maybe a club head and two club heads inside of that golf ball on the tee um, to, to where, listen, it's not just for this, but it's also to get the club head working underneath that. Now that to me, Feels really tough, which is good. That's the point. So we'll go ahead and demonstrate one with that in there. And I would start short and slow with these and gradually work my way up into fuller, longer swings. And one dump properly, I mean, that feels beautiful um, to me. I add that shallow downswing with a little bit of body rotation. It is beautiful. So whether you do it this way through the bucket or you take that out and just pop it in the ground and you angle that thing, right, to the point where it's about a, maybe a little bit higher than the grip of the club would be ideal, and put it far enough inside where it's just, I just kind of pop this in there, it's just inside enough where it makes you swing a little bit from the inside. It's gonna be exaggerated, maybe film yourself, use a mirror for feedback from down the line, but this is a way that you would guarantee getting rid of that over the top. You might not hit the ball perfect in the beginning, but film your swing, it looks what it looks like. If you're stuck with getting over top, over top, over top, you wanna do a lot of this. One of the things I like to do with this would be to add an object back in here mm -hmm. um, to just give you feedback in terms of the angle of attack of the club. So what I'm gonna play with here first is something like this. Uh, take your setup there for me, Bob. And obviously the goal here, or the idea, is gonna be that that club head works underneath. Underneath, I said. Let me hop in there for one second. Yep. Make sure it's doable. Yeah. Woo, that feels shallow for me even. Good point. I need to go to Home Depot. Good night. 
Okay, yeah, that's shallow. Okay, your turn. Why don't you do one or two little practice ones first? The feel for you from the top, go up to the top. The feel for you at the top would be your hands and arm. Go up, up to the top again. You, this from here, I want you to feel like almost goes away from the target. Okay. Not, not like it goes narrow, so yeah. it's bad. If you're at the top here, your hands and butt of the club should work away mm -hmm. from you as you turn. Okay. As this goes longer. So part of it, I'm always doing this with like wrist conditions for you, mm -hmm. but part of this too is just widening the just whole keep deal. it away. Yes, sir. What club do you have there? Um, yeah, why don't you just like bunt one or two towards the 100 okay. to get a feel for that? Uh huh. Hey. Okay. 2.1. Look at you. Let's do the same thing. That obviously felt like you were in your, in your way. Um, or not, not brutal? Not brutal. Okay. Good, I can make that harder. Yep. Yeah, good. Good. Do that again. 2.3. Don't care if you hit these perfect or not. I just want to see. I need to know that you have a station so that you'll have enough feedback whether you're doing this right or not. Yeah. Yes. So the third station that we'll use to help shallow out that down swings up, shallow out the angle of attack is the Old Faithful, right? So we've done this a ton of times in a lot of videos. It's one of the best um, feedback stations for swing direction during the downswing. Again, this video being more on the um, angle of attack and the width of the arc in a flat bottom spot, but in terms of the plane shift during the downswing and shallowing out the plane, this would be one of the top ones. Now, I've explained this, I think in the how to hit a draw video and some other ones in terms of setups, so I won't go through it thoroughly, but I have this thing set up, you know, maybe three quarters of the way down the club. I'll usually um, put it just outside my ball target line on about the same angle as the club that I'm using. I happen to have an eight iron here. And this station you guys have seen, I worked with Nick with this um, for a while when we sort of uh, first started. He was steep um, in terms of narrow right this way with a narrow angle attack but also was had a swing direction that was outside in had a lot of kind of pulls pull cuts um, all centered contact and this was a big one we did in the beginning as we adjusted his wrist angles and so we always keep this as part of his maintenance when i don't see him for a while or he's heavy in tournaments or he's not practicing as much this is something we know we always have to go back to to um, just do a couple balls and get to practice so this will basically be the same thing. Now this one, this one we're feeling more of the plane of the club, less of the angle of attack version, but would be the same way we've done this before, right? So I'll just demonstrate um, here. This one's more so feeling the club head working from inside. We'll go ahead and uh, hit one with this. Good, and that one felt good. There's a little, little bit of an overdraw for me because it's exaggerated, which is good but we'll help you guys that are too far in this way. So this is drill number three in a lot of our videos. We'll continue to be in a lot of our videos because it's really, really good. If you have any specific setup questions, check that how to hit a draw video. Um, okay, so let's keep this here. Mm -hmm. And this, just for your irons, I wanna just see if this is, well, you, you've been doing this pretty steadily, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So the, the question mark here would be, cause I love this. Mm -hmm. And especially you telling me that, that speaks volumes like, mm -hmm whether it needs to be priority board or not, maybe we increase the volume of this with that mm -hmm. and decrease the number of wrist conditions yeah. so on and so forth. And just, okay. so just give me like two or three with this, same thing, 100 yard sign. Yeah. All right guys, so three ways to shallow out your down. So again, a little bit of a different um, thought process here, more about the angle of attack, less about the plane shift. Those are three drills that I use a ton. I've used them forever, they work good. Some of you, it'll be a first ball, feels better. Some of you are gonna have to work a little bit. If you're someone who's too steep, takes too big of divots, has contact issues, aren't as consistent as you want, too far over the top, whatever, I would look at this, either um, figure out if it's you or work with a coach with this. The Head cover and front's one I love. That would, I would do sort of as a warm up with wedges at the beginning of a range session just to feel my exit pattern. The second video here I like a lot, which you'll see that we liked that a lot because we're gonna do more on that. And then the third one is in all of our videos because it's good, right? These are just different ways to do uh, the same thing. I would start here, uh, put this in as part of your regular practice when you're on the range, certainly as your block practice. Um, figure out which, which one you like the best, what gives you the best results, and then go with that. Okay, some of you guys, even if your downswing pattern's not shallow in terms of the plane, even if it's a little bit more in front of you, but you get this part right, 
and the, the bottom of the circle is wide and it's not so steep, you can still hit really solid functional shots. It doesn't need to be all or nothing. Like, hey, I need to get this swing perfect or else I can't play well. No, no, but the more you're over the top, okay, the more the club's in front of you, the more you need this to make that functional. So I hope you guys like this. We're gonna play around a little bit more with um, mixing in the lesson videos. Mary and I are trying to figure out how we're gonna um, sort of coordinate that. We wanna bring some of the live lessons back. We wanna keep the format we have now. So maybe in the comments down below, if you guys um, leave us some comments about how you like this format versus the other format or ideas you might have in terms of how can we include some of our live lessons where it's not just that video, but it's incorporated with information you guys are looking to hear. So uh, give us some feedback, let us know what you think. Hopefully these three stations help you guys. And uh, as always, you guys have any questions, you can leave them uh, in the comments down below. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you guys like this, please do me a favor and click the like button down below. Click the notification bell if you haven't already, and please subscribe if you haven't. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any comments, leave them down below. Now, would you hit that on like a normal swing for you? Like if you're swinging a seven iron, would you hit that? No. No? Uh -uh. I would hit that every single time. There's not a chance I would miss that usually. I would miss it every time. No, I like my four. How's your putting? I see you post yeah, Don't worry about my putting. It's all about the ball striking. Yeah.